Almost all of the athletes were really good at a lot of things, but Joan was good at everything. The most humble, the most gracious. She had a fierceness. She could dig and dig. I think she raced as hard in practice as she did in the finals at the Olympic Games. In the first time that women's rowing got to be in the Olympics, she was the first to win a medal. She was the first single scholar. She was, for decades, the best. She was who we idolized and looked up to and strived to be. I would get the Oarsman magazine, and when the version came that had her on the cover, I cut it out, taped it to my bathroom mirror, and thought, you know, this is, I want to be like her. She was just, she was perfect. She was the one that everybody was trying to catch. We, was trying, we were all trying to be like Joan. I think she's just a fierce competitor. She's one of the most focused people I think I ever met as an athlete. I mean, she's just all in. I mean, she prepared for six years for that moment. And she didn't let us down. She was a big underdog and was not expected to do nearly as well as she did. I'm just hitting my leg and, you know, with, because I wasn't, coaches weren't allowed to say any, anything. You could have gotten her disqualified if we yelled at, at her, but it was just, you know, so much emotion that was pent up and I was just pounding on myself and, you know, just to, to, to vent. When she did that well and won the silver, it, it was great for everybody and it really put U.S. rowing on the map. And to see her continue this career over the years is phenomenal. A novice is as important to her as a Olympic champion who can hop into a boat. She was so gracious to yeah. come and row with us as a master's team. Winning with Charles, I could take it or leave it, but winning with Joan, yeah, I'm gonna have that forever. She had to be opened up and have some of the tumor removed, patched back up, and within six weeks, was the head of the Charles 50th anniversary race that she rode in, and we won. She uh, still, she had chemotherapy on Friday and then won her race on Saturday. Right. Here. Yeah. <laughs> to see her with her current challenge of cancer, it does not surprise me that within that battle, she is relentless, she is gracious, she is not shying away from it and and determined to live her life how she has always lived it. And that is Joan, no matter what obstacle will confront her, she is there with absolute domination over it and um, just will not be deterred. You know, to still be there with people, to be with people to her means a lot. Um, and to be on the water every day is not surprising, but I have to say, unbelievably remarkable. You know, she is truly an inspiration. I hope that she shares it with other individuals battling cancer, with other women. She really will help just empower a lot of people. Is there a, a word you feel captures Joan? You know, something that might help others to know? Oh, I, I don't know if there's a word. There's a book. I'll try one word and I'd say, um, I could say selfless, um, tough. That's two words. I call her the quiet storm. She quietly went about all that she needed to do. She was certain of every aspect of what she needed to do and she accomplished those goals to the best of her ability. And for that, we should all be grateful. The word for me as, as her good friend is gracious. Humble uh, would be my word for her. Absolutely awesome, the first, the best, the role model. I don't think you can use just one word to describe Joan. Courageous, amazing, superhuman. I just can't find words. She's so special. Yeah, it isn't just about what Joan did. It's about what she continues to do for so many people across the United States to this day. She's a national treasure irreplaceable.